Today, as you can see, I'm not in the studio. We're actually on location shooting the second half of Ballistic. We got three days of production going on. So that's actually what we're doing right now when you're watching this. But instead of leaving you without an episode, the good people at NZ has hooked us up with some more free content from you again, from Philip Bloom. He's gonna be talking about lens whacking. So I'm gonna get back to this and let you watch that. What I'm doing right now is something that's called lens whacking or free lensing. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks of how to get some good results. What I love about this, it's one of the simplest and cheapest ways to get a really cool and dreamy look. Don't know how to say what I'm about to say. So give me if I stutter. Julian is being really old fashioned right now with the shooting style. He has his lens attached to the lens mount. Sarah's done the same thing. This is lens whacking. As you can see, if I move the lens around in my hand, I can get some really interesting looks. So how do you get started with this? What is your basic kit that you need? Well, you need a camera and you need a cheap lens. That's pretty much it. Before we get onto the art of lens whacking, you need to understand a little bit about the technical side and how it actually happens. So you need to understand what a flange is. A flange is the distance between the lens mount and the sensor. Different camera mounts have different flanges. This is a Canon EF flange, and it's about sort of like, like that. And mirrorless cameras have a much shorter flange. Uh, medium formats have a larger flange. And this is essential to knowing what lens you can whack with. To get really great lens whacking and to have the most options, you need a lens which is designed for a camera that has a larger flange than the camera you're shooting on. This is an old Nikon 35 mm lens and using it on this Canon mount, Nikon lenses sit slightly further away than the Canon mount and this gives you a slight gap. And this is key to getting the light leaks that we want and the ability to move the lens around. Now you could use a native lens, an EF lens on here for lens whacking, but you'll never be able to get infinity. You'll only ever be able to get close focus and macro focus because for the lens to get infinity, it needs to be attached to the actual camera. And we don't want it attached, we need that gap. That's why you need to have a lens which is of a larger flange than the camera itself. So what lenses are ideal for lens whacking? Old lenses are really nice and of course they're nice and cheap, but it's all to do with the focal length. I like 50 millimeters, which is a standard field of view on a full frame. Well, a crop sensor camera like this, you're looking at 35 millimeters. This is an old 35 millimeter F2, which is perfect for lens whacking. On this full frame camera, this 50 millimeter Nikon E series F1.8 is great because it's nice and small and nice and light, and it is really cheap. You'll notice on this E mount, I actually have an adapter. This is a E to EF, Canon EF mount, because the flange of a Nikon lens on this means it sits really far away and you're not gonna be able to control the amount of light that goes in there. So to solve that, this E to EF, Canon EF, goes on here, converting this into a Canon EF mount. And so again, perfect for a Nikon lens. To get the lens ready, we need to do a couple of things. First off, focus barrel needs to be set to infinity. We do all our focusing, not via the barrel when we're shooting, by moving the lens in and out. And to stop that focus moving, it's a very loose, because it's a very old lens, a little bit of gaffer tape over it. Also, a fast lens like this, F2, is gonna be way too shallow for shooting and lens whacking. So I'm gonna stop it down to about F4, F5.6. Of course, you can change it when you're actually filming, but you control the amount of light coming in by this variable ND. Really important on a bright day like this. This camera will give us okay results. The biggest problem really is you cannot use the viewfinder because this is a DSLR, it's a mirrored camera. This does not work. You have to use a rear screen. Two problems. First off, you can't really see it very well. And secondly, when you are lens whacking, you wanna be really part of the shot and you're very separated from it. I'm using electronic viewfinder and I'm much more connected 
to the shot, more stable, and I can see what I'm doing. This camera is a five axis stabilized sensor and it works even when the lens isn't attached, it doesn't know what it is. You simply set the focal length in the menu and the results you get are terrific. It just stabilizes it beautifully. This camera doesn't have a stabilized sensor and as you can see, I get these micro vibrations. It doesn't look as good at all, but this is a much older camera. And part of that is the fact I don't have that electronic viewfinder. I'm holding it away, which is reducing my stability. Not just doesn't have a stabilized sensor. This is a problem. What you can do, which will help, is shoot in slow motion. Shooting slow motion will make those vibrations look less pronounced. But the problem is this camera only does 720 slow motion. How you hold the lens and how you shield the amount of light coming in is really important. There's lots of different techniques, but one of the best ones is to simply hold it with your left hand and use that to shield the top. Because that's mostly where the light's gonna come from, not the bottom, it's gonna come from above you. There's the sun, that's where my light's gonna come in, and so I'm shielding it with my hand. Right now, I have the lens flush against the lens mount. It's very out of focus. There's nothing that's gonna be in focus when it's pushed up against this because of that flange. So I have to move it away, and as I move it away from the lens mount, I find my focus and I can pivot it around in my hand and change the focal plane and get some interesting cool effects. The other thing you can do is you can get a macro with this by simply moving the lens away. So I'm going to crouch down and look at the Canon camera. You can get really close up to objects just with a lot of light leaks because it's really detached from the lens. Now you know the principles behind lens whacking. The next thing is to know what works best. What is the best thing to film? Now, just general B-roll shots and landscape doesn't work very well. And getting shots of Julian and Mike and Sarah is quite boring. Part of the reason is I filmed them a lot already. The other reason is they're very static. What you need is to focus on somebody and move around. It's just finding somebody to film. Hello, can I film you? I'm going to shoot 4K 50 frames a second in slow motion, which should give me some really lovely results. And I can do some shots also in HD at 180 frames per second. Too much, to be honest with you, for slow motion, but you can always speed it up. I think 50 frames is a really nice amount. If your camera can do steps, this camera can do steps. Actually, around 96 to 100 frames a second is actually also a really nice frame rate. So we've got some. Um, some backlight, Veronica here. We've got some lovely long shadows. Try to avoid getting my footprints in, so I'm gonna be on here. And very simple direction. Just going to walk along here very slowly, sort of this sort of this sort of pace. And just sort of look out and about, just look very wistful and contemplative. Okay, let's go. I'm just going to pause there and just have a look around, look out to sea. So when your body, get a nice, when you're not walking, get a nice wide-ish stance which can give you a sort of ability to just rock around on your hips. This way you can get some nice floaty motion. If you try and do this while walking, you're going to add some up and down motion. So get a nice wide stance and then just move around like this. So right now, I want to get focus on the pier. Remember, infinity focus is what I've got set on here, and unless you have 
a lens which can sit further away, I'm never going to be able to get infinity. So I couldn't get this shot with a native lens. So I'm just going to be moving my lens away. So off of Veronica onto the pier till I get my focus. And there it is there. Just, it's very fine. So I'm on the pier right now and I'm going to pull focus. I'm moving the lens away onto Veronica and a transition to white. And walk a little bit towards the sea, not much. So I'm going to tell you when, hold it there. And when I say, off you go, towards the sea, slightly, lovely. So that's lens whacking. As you can see, it's a lovely technique, although something to be used in moderation. That's just one of the many things you're going to learn throughout this entire series. All of these things are designed to make you a much better filmmaker. Domain.com has all your website needs, including .com and .net domain names, and intuitive website builders to help you take the first steps in creating an identity online. They're affordable, reliable, and have all the tools you need to get started. You can start sharing your ideas with the world on a professional website. No domain name extension is going to help you tell your story like a .com or .net domain name. And if you want to brand yourself online, Domain.com has over 300 domain name extensions to fit your needs, from .club to .space. And they love you, and to show that love, they're giving you 15% off their already affordable prices when you get domain names, web hosting, and email just use the coupon code FILMRIDE at Domain.com's checkout. And when you think domain names, think Domain.com. Logo. Thanks again to MZ and Philip for letting us bring you free content. Again, check out the notes below so you can get a subscription to MZ and check out all the classes that they have there. Also, our social networks are all down there as well so you can check out what we're doing here. And I'll see you guys next week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.